What? You've had the divorce papers ready this whole time? That's low, even for you, but it doesn't matter because I'm not afraid. Troy sat across from me in our cozy apartment, his eyes cold and unyielding. He always had a way of making everything feel like my fault. His voice dripped with smugness as he spoke. Casey, it's simple. You either quit your job and take care of my father, or we're done. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Troy, I can't just give up my life. I love my job and you already know that. Why can't we find another way to take care of Dan? His gaze hardened. You don't get it, do you? This is about family. My dad needs you, and you owe it to us to be there for him. I leaned back, the weight of his words pressing down on me. This was the man I married, the one I once thought I'd spend forever with. But now I was seeing the manipulative tactics right in front of me. No, Troy, I said firmly. I don't owe him my career. He scoffed, standing up and stepping closer. You wouldn't understand loyalty if it hit you in the face, Casey. Before I could retort, my phone buzzed with a text. It was Jenna, my older sister. Thinking of you. Call me if you need to talk. Perfect timing, as usual. Knowing that Jenna had my back gave me a small ounce of strength to stand my ground. I looked Troy in the eyes, taking a deep breath. You can't force me into this corner. This isn't how a marriage works. If you say that, but look at where we are, Troy retorted. Dan's health is declining and you don't even care. It's pathetic. I felt my hands clench into fists. I care about Dan, but I also care about my own life. I won't let you dictate my decisions. Troy shook his head, turning away. You'll regret this, Casey. Mark my words. Later that evening, Jenna came over. As soon as she walked in, she gave me a knowing look. He's pushing you again, isn't he? Yes, I admitted, sinking into the couch. This time, it's about quitting my job. He wants me to take care of Dan full time. Jenna sat down next to me, her hand on my shoulder. You can't let him control you, Casey. You've worked too hard to get where you are, I sighed. I know, but it's not easy. Every step I take, he's there, pushing back. Listen, Jenna said firmly, don't lose yourself in this. If Troy really loved you, he wouldn't be making these demands. Her words struck a chord, a realization I had been avoiding for too long. You're right, I need to think about what's best for me, too. We spent the rest of the evening talking, the reality of my situation sinking in deeper with every word exchanged. Jenna's unwavering support was the anchor I desperately needed. After she left, I sat in the living room, replaying the day's events in my mind. Troy had shown his true colors, and I knew I had to prepare for what was coming next. No matter how hard it would be, I couldn't let him win. The next Saturday came faster than I had hoped, and soon enough, Troy and I were pulling up to his parents' house. Stepping out of the car, I could feel the tension build in my shoulders. Jenna's words were still fresh in my mind, but this was a different battlefield. Casey, do try to smile, Troy said, unlocking the front door, his voice dripping with sarcasm. We don't need your attitude today. I followed him inside, biting back a retort. Dan greeted us in the living room, a glass of whiskey in hand. Troy, Casey, nice to see you both. His eyes bore into mine, a subtle challenge. We made our way to the dining table, Troy's mother bustling around the kitchen. The small talk was as strained as ever, with Troy playing the charming son. But as the meal progressed, Dan's real agenda began to surface. So, Casey, Dan began, setting his fork down. How's work? Must be hard balancing everything with Troy and, well, potential future responsibilities. I forced a smile, swallowing my irritation. Work's been good, thank you. Busy but fulfilling. Dan nodded, a knowing glint in his eye. I see. You know, family is important. Troy's mother and I have always put family first, no matter the sacrifices. Troy shot me a glance, urging me to respond appropriately. I cleared my throat. I understand, Dan, and I care about family, too, but sometimes it's okay to find a balance. Oh, balance, Dan chuckled, taking a sip of his drink. Sometimes that's just an excuse to avoid hard choices. The comment hung in the air like a challenge. Sometimes hard choices are necessary, I replied, keeping my voice steady, but they shouldn't require losing yourself in the process. Troy jumped in, clearly trying to steer the conversation. Casey's always been passionate about her work. Maybe she can find a way to balance both, Dad. Dan leaned back, giving Troy a nod. Sure, sure. But passions can change, especially when love and duty call. Just a thought, Casey. The rest of the meal was spent in a blur of forced conversations and thinly veiled comments. 
By the time we left, my head was pounding from the effort of maintaining my composure. Once we were in the car, Troy's mask dropped. You just can't help yourself, can you? He spat, gripping the steering wheel tightly. My father was trying to have a conversation, and you just had to challenge him. I was standing up for myself, I shot back. You can't expect me to agree with everything blindly. You're so stubborn, Casey. This is why we're having problems. You don't respect my family. I let out a bitter laugh. Respect goes both ways, Troy, and I'm done being the one who always bends. The drive home was silent, the air thick with unspoken resentment. Inside my mind, Jenna's warning rang clear. Don't lose yourself. The cracks in our facade were widening, and I knew this was just the beginning. At home, I finally broke the silence. Troy, this isn't how a marriage should be. We need to figure something out. He didn't look at me as he headed to the bedroom, his voice cold. Figure it out yourself, Casey. I've done my part. Staring at the closed door, I realized Jenna was right. Troy and his father wouldn't stop until they had full control. And as I stood alone in the living room, I made a silent vow. I would fight back, no matter the cost. It was late on a Wednesday evening, and the living room felt like a battlefield as I faced Troy. I had just come home from work, barely managing to keep my composure after another intense meeting with my team. But it seemed Troy had other plans for tonight. You haven't actually considered quitting, have you? He started, his voice mocking. It's like you don't care about us or my father at all. I dropped my keys on the table, not ready to entertain another of his guilt trips. We had this conversation, Troy. My job is important to me. Besides, there are other ways to support your father. His eyes narrowed, the tension in the room thickening. Casey, let me make this clear. Either you quit your job and start being a proper daughter-in-law, or this marriage is over. I blinked, the weight of his ultimatum hitting me like a freight train. You can't be serious. You're choosing this moment to push me? He stepped closer, his tone menacing. I'm absolutely serious. It's time you pick your career or our family. I felt a surge of anger rising. Since when did being part of this family mean sacrificing everything I've worked for? You can't just demand that I give up my entire life. You're being selfish, Casey. My father's health is deteriorating and you're thinking about your career? He shook his head. You've changed. I crossed my arms, standing my ground. Maybe I have, but I'm not going to lose myself just to fit into your mold. He sneered, exasperation evident on his face. If you won't do this for my father, what guarantee do I have that you even care about this marriage? A bitter laugh escaped my lips. What marriage, Troy? The one where you lord every decision over me, where your father's opinions matter more than my own? That's not a marriage. It's control. The room fell silent, the walls closing in on us as the reality of our situation sank in. Troy's gaze softened, but only slightly. You have till the end of the month to decide, Casey. If you haven't quit by then, don't expect to find me here. I swallowed hard, unable to believe the person in front of me was the same man I once loved. He stormed off, slamming the bedroom door behind him, leaving me standing alone in the fallout. Later, I called Jenna, my fingers trembling as I dialed. She picked up quickly. Hey, Casey, everything okay? I took a deep breath. No, it's not. Troy gave me an ultimatum tonight. Quit my job or he's leaving. Oh, Casey? Jenna sighed. That's a terrible position to be in. What are you going to do? I paced the living room, trying to steady my thoughts. I don't know, Jenna, but I can't let him force me into this. I need to stand up for myself. Absolutely, you do, Jenna replied, her voice a firm anchor in the chaos. We'll figure it out together. You're not alone in this. After we hung up, I sat on the couch, my determination growing stronger by the minute. The next steps wouldn't be easy, but with Jenna by my side, I knew I'd find a way to reclaim my life. The lines had been drawn, and the battle was just beginning. The following weeks felt like a balancing act on a thin wire. I buried myself in work during the daytime, finding solace in my projects and the camaraderie of my colleagues. But the nights were a different story. Troy's silent treatment was a continuous reminder of the storm brewing overhead. One evening, after sending off a final project email, I made my way home, feeling a knot in my stomach. Stepping through the door, I could hear Troy on the phone in the next room. He was laughing, a sound that felt foreign in our current reality. Yeah, it should be finalized soon. 
Once it is, everything will be set. Troy's voice carried a confidence I hadn't heard in a while. My curiosity peaked, and I edged closer to the door, trying to pick up more. Don't worry, Dad, Troy continued. Once Casey is out of the picture, we'll have complete control over the finances and everything else. She won't know what hit her. My breath caught in my throat. What was he talking about? And then it hit me. Something was seriously wrong. I backed away quietly and waited until Troy hung up. When he emerged from the room, he barely looked at me. I'm going for a walk, I said, grabbing my coat. He just nodded, disinterested. As soon as I was outside, I dialed Jenna. We have a bigger problem than I thought. I said the moment she picked up. I overhead Troy on the phone with his dad. They're planning something, and it involves our finances. Calm down, Casey. What did you hear exactly? Jenna's voice was calm, yet urgent. They're planning to cut me out somehow. Troy mentioned finalizing something and gaining control once I'm out of the picture. Jenna, I need to find out what they're up to. All right, get home safely, and we'll figure this out together. First, check Troy's emails or any documents he might be hiding. We need proof. Back at home, I waited until Troy was asleep before starting my search. Navigating through his laptop, I stumbled upon an email chain that seemed suspicious. The heading read, Refinancial Adjustments. Clicking through, my heart sank further with each line I read. Transactions, account details, highly confidential terms, it all pointed to Troy lying about his job promotion and covertly using my income to fund a joint account with Dan. With shaking hands, I printed out the emails. This was exactly the kind of evidence Jenna and I needed. As I gathered the papers, feelings of betrayal and anger fused into a resolve. The next morning, I met Jenna at a nearby coffee shop. You won't believe what I found, I said, handing her the printed emails. Her eyes scanned the pages quickly. This is unbelievable, Casey. They're clearly planning to cut you off financially and leave you with nothing. We need a plan. I won't let them destroy everything we've built, I replied firmly. We have to find more proof, something that directly ties them to this scheme. Jenna nodded. We need to be smart about this. Let's gather as much evidence as we can and ensure it's irrefutable. Leaving the coffee shop, a sense of dread mingled with newfound determination. This was just the beginning, but I wouldn't back down. Troy and his father had underestimated me, and they were about to learn a hard lesson. With Jenna by my side, I was ready to take the fight to them. It was time to turn the tables, no matter what it took. Dinner at Troy's parents' house felt tense, like we were all actors in a badly written play. Dan sat at the head of the table, a smug look on his face, while Troy played the dutiful son. I felt like I was being scrutinized from all angles. As expected, Dan started with the subtle digs. So Casey, how's the job going? Must be quite demanding with everything else on your plate. I smiled politely, feeling the dagger in his words. It's busy but rewarding, thank you for asking. Troy chimed in, his voice sickeningly sweet. You know, Casey's been considering some changes, maybe spending more time with us, right dear? I forced myself to keep calm. Nothing's been decided yet, Troy. I'm still weighing my options. Dan's eyes glinted with hidden menace. I'm sure you'll make the right choice. Family should always come first. In the middle of the meal, I excused myself to go to the bathroom. The plan Jenna and I had cooked up was playing out in my mind. I pulled out my phone and turned on the recording app, slipping it into my purse before heading back to the dining room. My heart pounded with anticipation. When I sat back down, Dan leaned towards Troy, his voice dropping just low enough to think I wouldn't hear. She's too stubborn, Troy. We need to tighten the reins, remind her who's in control. Troy nodded, his face a mask of concern. I know, Dad, I'll handle it. She'll fall in line, just like always. We'll make sure of it. My stomach churned, but I forced myself to keep a neutral expression. Jenna was right. We needed more than just suspicion. We needed undeniable proof. As dinner wrapped up, Dan placed a heavy hand on my shoulder. Remember, Casey, we're all family here. Sometimes sacrifices need to be made for the greater good. I managed a tight smile, the weight of his touch disgusting me. Of course, Dan, I understand. Once we were in the car driving home, Troy's false kindness disappeared. You didn't have to be so cold tonight, he snapped. My father was trying to be nice. I didn't trust myself to respond without revealing my plan, 
so I stared out the window, keeping my silence. When we got home, Troy went straight to bed, leaving me alone to review the recording. In the quiet of the living room, I plugged my phone into my laptop and played back the recording. Hearing Dan's manipulation and Troy's compliance felt like a knife turning in my gut. The next day I met Jenna again. Dana and Troy practically laid out their plans over dinner, I said, playing her the recording on my phone. Jenna's eyes widened as she listened. This is it, Casey. This is the proof we need. Now we have to act smart. We can't let them find out that we know. I nodded. We need to build a strong case, something they can't weasel out of. Exactly, Jenna agreed. Now's the time to gather everything and be meticulous. We only get one shot at this. Walking out of the coffee shop, I felt a grim sense of satisfaction. The tides were turning. For every lie and manipulation, Troy and Dan would pay. And as I gripped my purse tighter, I knew that I had just taken the first big step in reclaiming my life. There would be more battles ahead. But I was ready. The game had changed, and now I held the cards. A few evenings later, I sat in the living room, waiting for Troy to come home. The envelope containing the truth lay on the coffee table in front of me, daring me to turn this moment into a confrontation. The recording device in my purse was my secret weapon. The door creaked open, and Troy walked in, noticeably weary. Casey, he greeted, a forced warmth in his voice. Troy, we need to talk, I said, my voice steady but stern. He narrowed his eyes, sensing the shift in my demeanor. What about? I reached for the envelope but kept my eyes on him. About us. About what kind of marriage this really is. He scoffed, dropping his bag onto a chair. I've been telling you that for weeks, Casey. Why the sudden urge to talk now? I stood up, placing the envelope in his hands. Open it. Troy looked skeptical but tore into the envelope. As he read the printed emails and transcripts, his face twisted into a mask of anger and disbelief. Where did you get this? I found it, Troy. I know you've been lying about your promotion and using my income for your secret plans with Dan, I said, holding my ground. He stepped closer, trying to intimidate me. You've been spying on me? How dare you? Yes, I have, I replied, unwavering. And I've discovered what you and your father have been plotting all along. You can't gaslight me anymore. Troy's face flared red with rage. This means nothing. No one will believe you over me. Let's see you try to use this against me. I took a deep breath, pulling out my phone. I don't need to try. I've recorded everything, including your little chat with Dan during dinner. I played back the crucial part of the recording, watching as Troy's confidence melted into panic. He lunged at me, trying to grab the phone, but I was quicker. I stepped back, keeping it out of his reach. This is who you are, Troy. This is the man I married. I stated, my voice cold and resolute. You manipulated me, tried to control me, but it's over now. He was breathing heavily, struggling to regain control. You think you're so smart, Casey. Doing this won't end well for you. I raised an eyebrow. It's already over. I'll be leaving, and I'm taking this to a lawyer. You can explain to them and everyone else why you and your father felt the need to set me up. For a moment he looked like he might hit me, but then he deflated, the color draining from his face. You're making a mistake, he said, his voice trembling. No, Troy, the mistake was thinking you could control and deceive me without any consequences, I replied, turning away from him. I took my keys, picked up my pre-packed bag, and walked out the door without looking back. This was the end of a painful chapter, but the beginning of my fight for justice and freedom. Driving to Jenna's, I felt a sense of liberation wash over me. The road ahead was uncertain, well, but I knew one thing for sure. I was taking control of my life, and with Jenna's support, I had the strength to face whatever came next. Arriving at Jenna's doorstep, I rang the bell. She opened the door, and the sight of my sister's reassuring smile brought tears to my eyes. It's done, I whispered, feeling a wave of relief crash over me, Jenna said, hugging me tightly. You did it, Casey. Now let's make sure he pays for everything. As we walked inside... I realized I was no longer alone in this fight. With the truth on my side and Jenna by my side, I was ready to face whatever came next. The battle had just begun, but for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful. A week had passed since I confronted Troy. I had moved in with Jenna, and with her support, we planned our next steps meticulously. My lawyer had all the emails and recordings. The legal wheels were in motion. That morning, Jenna and I sat at her kitchen table, 
finalizing the details. Casey, here are the divorce papers, she said, sliding them across the table. All you have to do is sign. I picked up the pen, my hand shaking slightly. This was it, the final push to sever all ties with Troy. I took a deep breath and signed my name, feeling a strange sense of calm wash over me. Good, Jenna nodded. Now we just need to ensure he gets these and understands he has no way out. I packed my belongings with Jenna's help, making sure I left nothing behind. We loaded everything into her car and drove to my former home. The plan was simple, deliver the divorce papers and recording, and then walk away for good. When we arrived, Troy's car was in the driveway. My heart pounded as I stepped out, clutching the envelope. I steeled myself, walking to the front door. Jenna followed, ready to support me if needed. I knocked, and after a tense moment, Troy opened the door. His face turned pale when he saw me. Casey, what do you want? I'm here to finalize things, I replied, holding out the envelope. Divorce papers? It's over, about Troy. He took the envelope, his hands trembling. You can't be serious. I am, I said firmly. Inside, you'll also find a copy of the recording and the emails. You cannot threaten or manipulate me anymore. Troy's facade crumbled. Casey, please, we can talk about this. We can fix things. There's nothing left to fix, Troy, I replied, my voice unwavering. You broke this marriage with your deceit and manipulation. This is the end. For a moment, he looked desperate, his eyes searching for a way to regain control. But there was nothing left for him to grasp. You'll regret this, he spat, his voice cracking. You'll end up alone. I'd rather be alone than stay in a toxic relationship, I shot back. Goodbye, Troy. Turning on my heel, I walked away, Jenna matching my stride. We got back into the car, and I let out a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding. It's done, I said quietly. Jenna reached over, squeezing my hand. You did the right thing, Casey. Now let's get you home. Back at Jenna's, we sat in her living room, a sense of relief mingling with the anticipation of what was to come. So what's next? Jenna asked gently. I start over, I replied, feeling the weight of the past weeks lift from my shoulders. I focus on my job, my life, and what makes me happy. I won't let Troy's actions define me anymore. Jenna smiled, her eyes filled with pride. You're stronger than you think, Casey, and remember, you're not alone in this. Thanks, Jenna, for everything I said, hugging her tightly. I couldn't have done this without you. That's what sisters are for, she replied, holding me close. As we settled in for the evening, a sense of calm washed over me. The future was still uncertain, but for the first time, it felt like it was mine to shape and control. And with Jenna by my side, I knew I could face whatever came next. The fight was far from over, but I was ready. Starting now, I would rebuild my life on my terms, free from manipulation and deceit.